Does anybody else like Three Musketeers as much as I do? Or is it just me? They seem to be an underappreciated candy bar, in my opinion. Don't you think? I mean, they don't have the peanuts like Snickers does, and or they don't have the, the little cookie thing like Twix. You know, it, it's just chocolate-covered nougat, but what's wrong with that? Does it need more? I mean, come on. I mean, hey, look at right here. The label says it all. You are awesome. Yes, Three Musketeers, you are awesome. You don't need anything special. You do you, okay? That's what I'm saying. And if anybody has a problem with you because of that, you just tell them to come see me, okay? I like you just for what you are, Three Musketeers. But I'm still going to eat you. Anyway, greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, kicking off the final year of Bargain Bag here on my channel. Yes, a, a solemn occasion, a, a bittersweet occasion, unlike the uh, Three Musketeers here, which was all sweet. Yes. Uh, anyway, yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, seven CDs each, from the late Skips Records and CD World. Uh, between the bags, I will be talking about a CD that I have found or that you may be likely to find when you go rummaging in the bargain bin of a thrift store or record store or some other place near you. Uh, but before the bags, I talk about the CDs that I uncovered in last month's bargain bag. I listened to them all and I'm going to tell you what I think of them. Uh, in order, in rough order of cast-offs to keepers, let's go ahead and get at it here. Uh, first off, Pancho Barraza. This was Kind of what it looked like, you know, he's a, a Mexican cowboy, basically. Kind of like that, uh, what I um, what I sort of disparagingly refer to as Mexican polka music. Probably a bit derogatory, but... Although the first few tracks did seem to have a bit of a an interesting throwback kind of a sound, which is, you know, gave it a little bit of dimension, but still not enough for me to want to, want to keep this. Uh, still kind of uh, unmemorable, not really all that great. Then we had a CD single from an artist named Kelly Mack, an R&B artist. Uh, very decent stuff, but, uh, you know, a, a good voice, but otherwise unremarkable. Just didn't catch my ear. And that, that happens with the vast majority of bargain bag CDs. It's, uh, in a way, it's kind of why they're in the bargain bag. Uh, Ivan, or Ivon, I-V-O-N is how you spell his name. And My Turn is the name of the album. Again, R&B. Uh, contemporary R&B, and yes, especially contemporary R&B has to really catch me uh, if it's going to, uh, you know, make me want to keep the CD. And this was, you know, again, he had an okay voice. The songs were just not anything special, not to my ears anyway. As an artist called Snap, and the album is called The Madman's Return. And this was um, hip-hop, mostly hip-hop, uh, with a little bit of R&B in it. But yes, it leans mostly on the hip-hop side. To me, totally unremarkable. Sorry. Then we have actually a local artist, uh, their name is Sky, and they are a, uh, a Celtic or Irish uh, themed band. Um, you know, the, the sound is, is inspired by Irish folk music mainly. Not really my thing. Uh, I, I do like Enya, which, who is kind of a Celtic pop artist, but other than that, I just don't have much of a, an appetite, so to speak, for that. Then we have a classical CD, which quite prominently, prominently as you can see, used to be owned by a David A. Mitchell. And he wanted us to know that, didn't he? Anyway, this was uh, a string quartet music, uh, basically, you know, classical stuff. I have a handful of classical CDs in my library, a, a fairly modest classical collection. Just nothing on here that really grabbed my ear and made me want to keep this. So, Then we have a soundtrack, which I think was the only soundtrack in here. No, one of two soundtracks. Uh, the Piano, music by Michael Nyman. I had never seen the movie, and this was very, very quiet, subdued, lush piano orchestration. I, I should, the title of the movie probably gives away. Uh, but yeah, almost a little too snoozy for me, to, to put it more disparagingly than it deserves, I will admit. But yeah. And then this next one is uh, adult contemporary pop, basically. Uh, Dee Dee Wood is her name, and uh, yes, this was from the early 90s, 1993. So yeah, that's uh, she had, again, a perfectly fine voice, decent songs, just nothing really ear-grabbing. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, if you like uh, adult contemporary pop from the early 90s, female vocals, yeah. you might like Dee Dee Wood. And then this one was kind of interesting. Um, Hoi Polloi, and uh, that's the name of the band, and this is their, I believe, sophomore album, if I remember correctly. It's called Spin Me. 
and good stuff. And I, it was kind of surprising because when I looked them up on Wikipedia, uh, they were referenced or categorized as a contemporary Christian band or a, a Christian rock band. I didn't hear, and you know, I both listened to the songs and read the lyrics in the liner notes. I couldn't see any overt references to Christianity, God, or Jesus, or any of that stuff. So I may keep this one and spin it a few more times before I actually get rid of it. Uh, but because yeah, it's kind of got a new, not quite a new wave sound, but a little bit like that. In earlier days, I would have seen that they were a Christian band and gone, "No, oh, get thee away from me." But. Uh, but you know now I've I've become I mean I've got a couple of uh, CDs that actually have spiritual songs uh, in them and even though I don't get anything out of the Christian lyrics, uh, some of it's still pretty enjoyable I have to say. Then we have uh, a country artist and he looked like uh, I, and and for all I know he may be um, Native American or something so I kind of expected something with a Latin flavor or possibly, uh, you know, uh, uh, Native American inspired music. But this is pretty much straight ahead country, which kind of surprised me, you know, just, just the fact, the simple fact of the genre juxtaposed to his look. I just wasn't expecting that. Uh, not bad stuff. Uh, some, some of the stuff's actually pretty, pretty well written songs. And I'm going to play this one a little bit more again. I'm not sure if it's going to be definitely a keeper, but uh, I kind of like this stuff. These next four songs are, are, or CDs are pretty much keepers for me. Uh, this one, Cozy Sheridan, is a female folk pop singer, and uh, I was not expecting much out of this, uh, not for any particular reason, just sometimes I just look for a vibe when I'm looking at the cover art or the track listing or whatever, and I was not expecting much out of this, but she's she's a good uh, artist. She makes has some good tunes. She's got a good voice. She's very good with her um, uh, instrumental aspects, and a lot of the songs have pretty witty lyrics, I have to say. So yeah, some good stuff. Um, would you like to meet the voice inside my head is the name of the one, one of the songs. So that kind of gives you an idea. She's got a little bit of a, a possibly in some instances self-deprecating sense of humor, which I'm always up for. So uh, yeah, I'm going to play this one a few more times and possibly look at what else she might have. This is like her sixth or seventh album, I think. So she's got a lot of uh, back catalog to look for, to look through. So, and this one, I had a feeling I was going to like this one when I saw it, and I was right. This is Crossing Cultures. This is a world music compilation CD, and I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm not huge on world music, but uh, you know, just putting this thing on in the background for a little bit of exotic, uh, exotic noises. Uh, this is really, really good stuff. So, uh, and it was put out on the Miramar label, which is a relatively well-known. Um, it's it, distributed by BMG, so it's kind of a I don't know if it's necessarily a subsidiary of BMG or was, or if it was strictly independent and just distributed by them. But you know, label politics aside, uh, it was it's a label that I had been familiar with before. Is basically what I'm trying to say to make a long story even longer. And then the uh, one that was familiar that I had actually owned before out of this bunch is a group called the Din Pedals. This is their self-titled album. And uh, this is really good stuff. It's it's alternative rock bordering on industrial rock. You know that that kind of machine type sound uh, that you know in the percussion and stuff is kind of what uh, what uh, distinguishes industrial music. But uh, yeah, good stuff and uh, maybe not quite as good as I remember it. But I am definitely going to keep this CD again for a, at least for a little while and play it some more. And the lead vocalist. One thing that kind of turned me off back then was uh, for one thing it was a little too industrial hard rockish for my tastes back then uh, my tastes have uh, broadened and developed since then and also his voice was a little too idiosyncratic for me back then and you guys know i like idiosyncratic unique voices but uh, i've come to probably because i remember what he sounded like i was more receptive to re-listening to this album i'm sure that's a big part of where this comes from but yeah i'm going to listen to this a few more times and uh, hopefully maybe i will keep it again for a while so and then the Final Keeper here is the second of two soundtracks in this bunch from a movie called Bounce, which I had never seen, and a lot of good stuff on here. Um, Carly Simon has a song that really caught my ear on here, and uh, BT, who is an electronic artist, uh, he, he collaborated with NSYNC on their, I believe, their second or second and or third albums, so that's where I knew him from. And then we've got Beth Orton, Dido, of course, Dido sings Here With Me, her big hit, which I've got on another soundtrack and her studio album already, but still, you know. Sophie B. Hawkins and uh, uh, several other uh, artists of, of, of varying fame levels. But yeah, a good, good collection of, of songs on here. And I don't know, I might have to read up on the movie and 
see what the movie's all about, too. So, yeah. A pretty decent collection of stuff here, I have to say. Yeah, some unexpected uh, good stuff, as here there usually is in a bargain bag. And now let's get to my favorite part of this, is opening the bags. One thing I'm going to miss about a uh, bargain bag, it's like having Christmas time 12 times a year. Opening presents that are wrapped, and I don't know what's inside them. So, let's take a look at the first. The first bag of 2021. And lest I forget to do it as I did last month, I filmed the video when I was a little too tired I shouldn't have filmed it. I forgot to give you the customary peekaboo with what's inside the bag. So, okay, let's see what's in here. First thing we have is Harry Connick Jr., an, a well known artist in a uh, grab bag. How about that? Uh, yeah, this is an album that I do not have. And uh, this has one of his biggest hits, I Could Only Whisper Your Name, which is one of the Harry Connick songs that I've always enjoyed. So, cool. I think I had this one a long time ago, listened to it, and for whatever reason, got rid of it, as I am wont to do very uh, unfortunately and, and prematurely, usually. But, yeah. I like Harry Connick Jr. I'm not an avid fan. His, his albums, for me, can be hit and miss. And I don't know what it is or why that is. But, uh, anyway. And we have... Sugar Shack. I, I had to read it because I couldn't read the, the cover. I had to read the spine. Uh, Top Loader is the name of the album. This one is, it's an indie release, so I have absolutely no idea what is on that album. So that'll be interesting to see. Then we have St. James, American Man. They look kind of like an alt-rock group. Or possibly, well, 2001, so you had to be uh, definitely way post-grunge. But, uh, yeah, long-haired guys. Oh, Generation Suicide. That uh, could have some, some dark material on it. Uh, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind is one of the uh, songs on here. So. You always find interesting odds and ends in these bargain bags, you know. We have Kilay, or, or is it Kilai? I don't know how the pr authentic pronunciation is. Uh, well, it looks like it might be, it's either Spanish or perhaps Portuguese. And the copyright information is covered up by the sticker down at the bottom right, so I will have to look that up and uh, let you guys know what it is. Uh, and we have Danny Wright with an album called Fantasies. No idea what this is about either, so lots of odd, weird stuff in here. And we have... For Guilty Pleasures. And, oh, a classical compilation. And I, I've always talked about how uh, some of my music that I listen to is not so Guilty Pleasures. That'll give me, that gives me enough reason to listen to this. A CD called For Guilty Pleasures. And then the final... Well, that was a pathetic little thing. It, it barely cleared my feet down there. We have... Endless Summer by Fenez. You can barely read it. Fenez, I think, is how you pronounce the artist name. Assuming that is the artist name. I don't know. Because this is looks completely unfamiliar. So, yeah, one CD out of that whole batch is, will, looked familiar to me. So, hey, that just, that just makes it more of an adventure listening to that stuff, doesn't it? Okay, now, turning our attention to the Bargain Bag Spotlight CD for January of 2021. It is... Now or Never, the debut solo album by Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys. Now, I don't think I've necessarily made it any secret on this channel that I have a soft spot for boy bands, this, especially around the turn of the millennium. Uh, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC uh, are my two main uh, favorites. Well, and also a group called Five out of the UK. They were quite possibly, they edged out Backstreet Boys and NSYNC for my favorite boy band. But anyway... Uh, yes, I was always a fan of Nick Carter, even before he sprang out on his uh, own solo career. And this album actually came out a week earlier, I believe it was, than Justin Timberlake's solo album, Justified. So they were kind of in this competition, this rivalry of sorts, even though they were on the same label. Uh, and so I was really rooting for this album, and I actually enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Justified. Uh, partly because uh, one of my favorite voices from back in the 80s is uh, Brian Adams, and... 
Nick has a kind of a rasp to his voice, at least he does on this album, that reminds me a lot of Brian Adams. So, And plus, he went in a very much of a rock direction, as opposed to the pop sort of stuff that Justin Timberlake did, and also that Backstreet Boys and NSYNC did. So in, for that reason, and amongst a couple others, that's why I liked Nick, and I was always rooting for him. I have always been jealous of Justin for having the more successful solo career. But yes, yeah, still, this is a great album. I mean, especially if, as I said, you like that uh, that Brian Adams-ish rock kind of a sound. Uh, Nick does a pretty darn good throwback to that kind of stuff. Help Me was the lead-off single from the album. That's track one here. That's what leads off the album. And it's a, just a great, upbeat, uh, sing-along chorus kind of song. Really good, high energy. Uh, and that leads into My Confession, which is track two, and that's an, also an upbeat song, not quite as upbeat as Help Me, but still a very nice energetic. And yeah, this album has a pretty good mix of, it's basically two-thirds up-tempo songs to one-third ballads ratio, so it's got a good, decent mix of stuff. Uh, one of the standouts for me is, I guess you'd classify it as a power ballad. It's called I Got You, and it's just great. It, it kind of builds into this. It starts out as much more of a quiet ballad, but it builds into kind of a a soaring, you know, power ballad sort of thing. Just a great, great song. It's got a great uplift toward the end of it. And uh, Blow Your Mind is another, probably one of the heaviest songs on the album, one of the hardest rocking songs on the album. Uh, Heart Without a Home is another one of the ballads that got a lot of attention, I think. I can't remember if it was actually a single, but that's a standout song, and I think several artists have covered it since then. And that was, yeah, that was, in my opinion, one of the best written songs on this album. But yeah, the good songs don't stop there. Um, is It Saturday Yet is a great, uh, just a great fun kind of a sing-along song. Uh, Do I Have to Cry For You is another one of the ballads, and that was pretty good. But And I Just Want to Take You Home, that's another good one. I mean, this this album is... It's underappreciated, I think. I mean, Justified got all the attention back in 2002 and early 2003 when they was, these were both released. This one kind of got lost in the shadows, but unfairly, I think. Uh, give this one a try. I mean, and, and the rest of his discography, Nick kind of peddled back to the much more pop stuff after this album. I don't know if it was because this one wasn't as successful as Justin's, and so he decided this was the wrong tack for him or what. But uh, I, I'm kind of re regretful of that. I mean, his other albums are good. It's just this one, it was the standout, in my opinion. Just because, yeah, he, he kind of diver diverted from the pop stuff and went into some rock territory, which I thought suited him really, really well. So, very, very good album. If you uh, find it somewhere on the shelves, pick it up. Or, or if you can stream it somewhere, I don't know if it's on streaming, but yeah, it's worth a listen. Okay, now let's go ahead and dig on into the second of two mystery CD grab bags for today. Just take a little off the top. Yeah. It's a joke for all the barbers out there who might be watching. And here we go. Peekaboo ICCDs. And what have we here? We have, oh, Martina McBride. I think this might actually be the second Martina McBride CD I've pulled out of a bargain bag. First one was way back when I started my bargain bag feature, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't think much of that one. Uh, again, I'm not huge into country, remember, so... But yeah, I will definitely listen to this. I can think of a lot worse things to listen to than Martina McBride, let's put it that way. Then we have... Oh, <laughs> Air Guitar, Songs for Kids. Okay, I, I don't see myself keeping this, but uh, cute little idea. I don't know if this is a local thing. Oh no, Fairview, North Carolina. So yeah, they're not local. Oh, I think I know who I might be able to send that one to. He works with kids a lot. So Anyway. Uh, Princeton Bloomsbury, uh, yet another artist that I have never heard of before. This is a four-track EP, so not much to say about that one because I never heard of them before. So. Then uh, <laughs> Skip must have had a lot of copies of this. Uh, yes, this one I pulled out just a couple months ago, and it was yet another still sealed in its shrink wrap, as this one is. Ten Years of su Success, it's a uh, classical compilation from the Naxos label. Anybody want a free Steel Sealed in its shrink wrap classical compilation CD? Didn't think so. Anyway, we have hmm, North Sound, The Poetry of Nature, The Poetry of Walt Whitman. Yeah, music and nature sounds uh, with uh, Walt Whitman's poetry recited on top of it, I guess. That's probably what that is. We have 
MCA Master Series Sampler 88. This is a jazz slash new age compilation. I know I've had one of these. I can't remember if it was Sampler 88 Volume 1 or a different volume of a different sampler year. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, one of these appeared in my bargain bag before, so yeah. Mm. I probably won't keep that one either. And then, ooh, that was cool. I, sh I should do that more often than uh, Alphonse Mouzon with Morning Sun with guest artists. Oh, it looks like he is a drummer because as you can probably see, I would assume that's a picture of uh, Alphonse Mouzon on the drums. Hmm. Manufactured and distributed worldwide by Optimism Incorporated. I am optimistic to hear what the CD sounds like. So there we go. And well, just like that, Bargain Bag is over for another month. It's just over way too quickly. I have so much fun with this feature. I'm going to be sad to see it go. But anyway, yes, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of January 2021. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.